Hi, hello, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Today's video is going to be about Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss. Now, the art you're watching in the background is actually going to be a little bit related to the topic this time. Uh, I haven't done a self-insert in like 10 years, but the idea of Imsonas was just really fun, and I actually ended up improving on this design after finishing the piece that you're watching and creating a companion character for one of my friends, so I'll go ahead and link the finished designs in the description. With that said, we're going to get on to today's topic. Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss are two kind of adjacent cartoons set in the same universe made by Vivian Medrano and uh, in Hell of a Boss's case is co-written by Brandon Rogers, the voice of the main character Blitz. The O is silent. Um, but a host of amazing artists, voice actors, and songwriters have all contributed to uh, both of these shows and um, a lot of the streams that helped boost the show's popularity, I believe, were typically hosted by uh, the artist Ashley Nicholas. Um, I'm not going to list every single name involved with creating these series because of all their amazing, um, even really small animation productions have a ton of people involved. But I do highly recommend looking them up, and I am going to be linking the uh, official Has Been Hotel pilot and the episodes that are out so far of Hell of a Boss in the description as well. And mostly this video, I'm just going to talk about kind of why this show has really captured my attention so much and why my poor, poor followers are just suddenly being inundated with has-been content. Um, so, like, one of the things that really gets me so much is that you, all of these people who worked on these shows have put so much love and effort into the series that they're doing, and it really, really shows. Uh, I feel like it's something that the audience can tell uh, when you're really caring about what you're making versus when it becomes kind of this soulless, I'm just doing it for a job thing that kind of lends to this really corporate blandness in a lot of non-indie work. And the show itself feels really self-indulgent, probably because it's it's literally someone's like deviant art OCs, but this is so also sort of the same feeling that I get from watching Powerhouse Animation's Castlevania that was made as a Netflix original, and I'm definitely going to talk about that at some point because that show rocked my entire world um and I'll probably talk more about that idea of like self-indulgence from the creators and how you can really tell that that's a thing when I talk about that because I felt like that was really one of the defining parts of my experience watching that show um but I really think that you can you can tell that the people making these series um, more and more, too, I think, are not just corporate writers who are pandering to fans, but these are people who have been fans of things. These are mostly people who've been making fan art of things and creating fan content for things, and I think it's really, really cool to watch more and more people go kind of from that, like, fan content creator to making something original that's been happening a lot lately. It's really, really cool to see and really honestly inspiring for people like me. But that whole idea of like, create what pleases you and people will show up, I feel like that's really being proven by shows like this. Um, and then, now I know there's a lot of controversy, I guess, surrounding uh, Vivzy Pop or Vivian herself. And I, I feel like some of it is complete BS, and then some of it is, like, legitimate concerns with, like, supposedly people she's hired, and some of it is, I just think, people who've gotten to grow up with a lot stricter behavior on the internet than a lot of us who witnessed the, uh, the Wild West days of the web as our, as in our tween and teen years. Um, but... I think that's really all I'm going to say about that much, just acknowledging that it's there, but I don't really want to talk about it because I don't really have any interest in becoming like a drama channel, um, and I feel like it's completely fair and valid to enjoy a show while being critical of certain elements of it or its creator. Your mileage may vary on that, and that is totally fine. 
oh, oh, you might, you might hear a little bit of purring in the background. My, uh, my kitty has come to visit. His name is Severus. Yes, that one. Um, hello. You're just a little, little attention whore, aren't you? Um, but getting back to the topic of, like, you know, Vivzy Pop and, you know, her as this creator of this series, I do think it's also really important, uh, both contextually and, like, to me personally, it's really important and really cool that uh, these are literally, like, the deviant art OCs, that she is just... I think she's like four years older than me. Like we could have been in high school together. Um, and her deviant art OCs, yes, literally. Like if you look back, you can you can find her edgy deviant art stuff that eventually became Alistair and Angel Dust and all of these characters that has been fans know now. Um, but they've gained so much popularity, the adoration of literally thousands of people, millions of views on YouTube, and have, now there's just, just tons of fan work, um, and it's, it's insane, and honestly really inspiring to someone who's still hoping to kind of find a voice and a story to tell, that, like, it doesn't have to be a perfect story, it can be your shitty DeviantArt OCs, um, and as long as you pour your heart and your skill into it, uh, you know, someone's going to like it, and maybe a lot of people will like it. That's really, really powerful, even if some people might not agree with it, and it's the kind of advice that a lot of, you know, industry pros or whatever give, but you don't really see evidence of it like this very often. So it's, it's really, for me personally, as as an, an artist and a creator, it's really important to see something like this. Um, even, again, if there are problems with it, that's okay. Uh, it's okay for media to have problems. Um, because it's, it's clearly still something that resonates with people. Um, and I'm going to kind of use this to transition, I guess, into talking about, like, the fan works, because... <gasps> Holy hell, the fan work for this ser these series has just blown me away. Um, I'm actually going to just take a second to, you know, name drop or talk about some of the specific creators that I've stumbled on while just kind of browsing around and looking for things. Um, Chroma9 uh, has created some incredible fan songs um, in sort of, I guess you could say different styles than you're used to hearing fan songs they usually like fall into like really specific categories of this like pop rock or uh peppy i don't i don't really know how to say it like describe the genre of fan song that i'm thinking of but um you know like two of them are rap and it's really good and they are definitely all going to end up on like my top played for spotify this year because i'm obsessed um, and then, like, Paranoid DJ on YouTube has done some absolutely amazing voice acting for, uh, fan comic dubs and even, um, like, in-character song covers, which is, I, I can't even begin to imagine, like, what you have to do with your voice to be able to do that, um, you know, and there's so many individual animatics that have come out over the last year or so that people have poured literal months of their life into making and that effort and time really shows um and then you know just individual artists uh like i am probably mispronouncing it but umbrionix is how i'm gonna guess the username is pronounced um and i think that person has actually done some official collaboration but i'm not super sure on that um but yeah there's just so many amazing creators that have obviously fallen in love with this show and you know poured hours of their life or months even of their life into making something to show that love and i'm definitely going to link to some of my favorite artists some of my favorite fan comics fan dubs um fan animatics because so many of them are honestly on a like really professional polished looking level and i'm really looking forward to keeping an eye on some of these fan creators and seeing where they go, um, with their lives and careers. Um, 
but I am going to stop there because otherwise I'm just going to spend the entire video gushing about these fan works that I love when I'm talking about the show itself. Um, and of course, like, having a fandom like that isn't something unique to has been in hell of a, um, fandoms with huge bases of, uh, insane work and talent exist everywhere, but I think in the case of these ones especially, the way the, like, core show doesn't really hesitate to include topics and arcs that are usually taboo, even in work made for adults, uh, you know, things like sex work, drug use, homophobia, um, or even, like, in Hell of a Boss, I think that, like, class struggles are clearly a really important core part of the plot line. Um, and, like, things like the idea of redemption and morality, uh, in literal hell, where presumably those things wouldn't exist, um, without going down a route that's just pure angst and torture, whatever, um, and just dark and grim all the time, um, I feel like that's allowed people to connect emotionally with these characters when they normally wouldn't be able to fully if it was, you know, handling it more lightly than it was, or if it was, you know, going down that super grim dark route. I feel like it, it really landed in that, like, perfect me middle ground, um, while still including these topics that normally get glossed over in a lot of, like, you know, fluffy UEU. I, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that emoji. Can you tell? Um, because there has been like a huge uptick in shows that, like has been, do have queer representation. But especially in the case of cartoons, those have largely been directed at kids and take place in universes where queerness is just normal and nobody bats an eye at a character who uses they them pronouns or lesbian kiss saving the universe and that is so good and super important especially in kids media but i also think that has been his willingness to acknowledge things like homophobia to toe the line of what so many people would consider stereotypes um but are actually things that just like older queer people did I just call myself an older, older queer? Uh, oh no. Um, but the people who are older and didn't grow up with things like Steven Universe um, really relate to uh, in a way that a lot of those fluffier portrayals uh, in things like Steven Universe or She-Ra and the Princesses of Power uh, don't really allow for. Um, you know, and I think that it's important to have both approaches where you do deal with the messy side of things and, you know, queer people not necessarily being great people, you know, queer people who do sex work, queer people who do have drug problems, um, you know, people who do, you know, face homophobia. Um, and personally, I think that, you know, it's, it's been handled in a way that is really engaging and enjoyable without, like, actively just, like, punching someone's trauma in the face, you know? Um, and there's, honestly, smarter people than me who've talked about stuff like this already, and, you know, maybe I'll talk about it in a more queer themes-focused video, but it it is a big part of why I think I like has been so much. Um... But yeah, I, I guess, ultimately, I can't say what the, you know, secret ingredient that's caught my attention with these shows so strongly is, um, you know, but I know that since getting back into them earlier this year, um, around the time that the fifth episode of Hell of a Boss came out, one of my friends was like, there's new stuff! How did we not know there's new stuff? Um... And since then, I have just been drawing more. I've been, I found myself creating more, uh, and creating for myself, not just doing, like, you know, slogging through commissions like I have been for the past five, ten years. Um, and I, I feel like it's really pushed me to, you know, channel the same energy that I'm seeing in so many of these other creators and to really engage with things that I'm feeling passionate about 
rather than kind of keeping my mouth shut because you know it it's just been really i don't know i don't want to restart this recording i'm not going to uh, but um I, I got off script i had a script i promise um but you know i've i've just been feeling more able to create and you know my my sketchbook right now is just kind of filled with you know my weird little attempts to kind of mimic the show's style and you know doing that has actually led to me sort of being able to translate elements of that and i feel like you know in my own artwork that is done in my own style uh you know like my ability to draw expressive faces is improving um because that's one of the things that has been is really really good at is these like wildly expressive uh facial features and everything like that and i feel like i'm being able to pull some of that into my own work by obsessing over what's already in the show um and i think in general like for me this is this show has kind of come at a turning point in my life so you know i'm sure there's a, a little bit of weird uh emotional attachment going on here but i just feel like it's it's you know engaging with it and you know feeling able to post these fan works and holy crap uh, my my twitter posts are actually getting attention now after I started posting some has-been fan art that's that's insane because usually I get like you know one person sees it or whatever because the algorithm is so terrible over there um so yeah I think for me has-been has just really encompassed a lot of really positive things uh and I feel like this is getting really long but uh so in short has-been hotel hell of a boss really really amazing um i am going to like i said link to the show um for hell of a boss the pilot for has been hotel which did get picked up by i think like a24 is the name of the studio that picked it up um i'm gonna link to a lot of my favorite creators uh of fan content for them in the description and then, uh, of course, you are welcome to disagree with me on whether or not you like this series, whether or not you think that, um, you know, the controversy around Vivian is something that can be ignored or, you know, something that is reprehensible or whatever. Um, just, you know, if you decide to comment with that or whatever, just keep it civil. And remember that at the end of the day, it is okay to just click away from content that you don't like that isn't directly harming anyone um and then other than that feel free to let me know have you watched either of these shows and have they had a similar you know encouraging effect on you uh or are you one of my poor followers who's just suddenly getting bombarded with all these weird little demon doodles wondering when the heck i'm gonna draw elves again <laughs> don't worry that uh, soon um, just go ahead and let me know in the comments, and if you have your own Impsona, tell me about them. I would love to hear it. So, uh, with that, if you stuck around through this whole video, I adore you, and if you clicked away already, you're not hearing this, but I adore you anyway, and I hope your day is awesome. <laughs>